Oh, maybe 12 or 15 years ago, I was at my computer typing an answer, I think, to an email. And as I was watching the words on the screen come across, I said, that's pretty good stuff. I wonder, I wonder who wrote that. And the words on the screen were, may the blessing of God Almighty find you when you least expect it and need it most. May the blessing of God Almighty find you when you least expect it and need it most. Now, now since I wrote that, I, I've taken a look to see if it's sourced somewhere else. I haven't done an extensive search. I think it's something maybe I wrote, well, not me. And I'm grateful for that expression. When I apply it, for instance, to the gospel text that we heard this morning, um, there's this woman who has been suffering for 12 years with a hemorrhage, and I'm not going any further than that. And, and, and she's just been in incredible pain and whatever, and she sees Jesus, and, and she's just not even going to go into his face, she's just going to wander near and just touch the hem of his garment, and then surprise with the blessing of God Almighty, when truly she least expected it and needed it most, when the power went out from him. Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue's daughter, is dying. And he's looking for anything, as any one of us would be. And he sees Jesus, but there's the woman, and it slows everything down. And then people are running to tell him, it's all over, forget it, too bad. And Jesus says, no. Brings him and a few close disciples and goes in. And Jairus discovers the power of May the blessing of God Almighty find you when you least expect it and need it most. And so I, I give you that as a preface for a story about me that I would like to share. It will give you a chance to, to understand who it is that now stands amongst you as preacher and pastor. And uh, it's actually the story of before. It's the story of the young man who was the general sales manager of a radio station, I think I was 29 or 30, maybe 31 at the time, and I was newly received into the Episcopal Church. My wife and I, when we got married some many years earlier, at a too young an age, had decided uh, Sunday mornings were for rolling around the house. Her Methodist tradition and my Roman Catholic tradition weren't strong enough to force us out. But then that baby was born named Melinda. And guess what happens when babies are born? Although, not as often today. We've got a lot of work to do. But in my time, it was a wake-up call, and we found the perfect home in the Episcopal Church. But my daughter loves to tell the story that six years from her baptism, I was actually in the center. But this story is somewhere in the beginning. And so here we are, we're in Portland, Maine, I'm in this job, and I really received the Episcopal Church in November, and during that fall, the owner of the radio station said, I've got a sales quota for you, it's out of sight, you'll never make it, but if you do, I'll take you on a sailing trip to the Florida Keys, on a 45 or 50 foot boat, with a sail, that's that tall thing I understand in the middle. <laughs> Well, we took George up on that challenge, and guess what? We got it. And so here we are, early January, down in the Florida Keys. Now, I'm this new Episcopalian. I've had a couple of great moments already in church. Another part of the story. And I decided to travel with a book of common prayer. Not this particular one, but with a book of common prayer. I think it was the one that was given to me in my reception. I thought I would try to read the morning prayer. I did one morning while we were waiting to get to the boat. And then the next day, here we are, we're on the boat. We've been sailing around. It's been fun. And then we take the boat and we park it. But that's not the sailor's turn, is it? Oh, somebody here can correct me now. They, they, took, they took rope and they tied the car to the boat to the thing over the top. It was made of concrete. So it was tight. It was lovely how tight it was. And we went into town because the restaurants were on the land. And we had a good time. Oh, we had a really good time. Then we got back to the boat, slept, and then the next morning we went out 
We would have to go around the water again. But that uh, next night, we didn't dock the boats right. anywhere. They took this big thing from the front. It had a long chain or something, so it was really heavy. And they threw it off the side. And they told me that that would sink down enough. And here we are in the middle of this bay. I can see land way off that way and that way. And uh, it would swing back and forth, but we weren't going anywhere. We could be safe with this thing and anchor. So here we are, anchored here. And that's in there. You will go on to sleep. It's a fairly good size boat. But about 2 to 30 in the morning, as the boat's going a little bit back and forth, I was getting nervous. I was pretty sure that that thing they threw off the side wasn't going to work. So I went up on the, the deck. And as far as the back, the stern, see, I, I do remember some of the words now, the boat. And I was all alone, and I brought my little bag with me that I had, you know, taken on the plane. And I sat there, and I remembered something about geometry. So I took a look, and I found this big old bright thing in the sky called a star. And I figured, okay, I see that there. And I uh, see, oh, there's that point of land over there. And here I am. And I'm going to keep an eye on how close we are in this triangle. And it starts to compress. I'll wake everybody up and we'll do something. But we kept going back and forth. And I kept watching. You know, we basically stayed in the same place that we said we were. And by then, I realized, oh, well, we might be okay. And uh, I relaxed a little bit. And I thought, oh, there's enough light now. It's just the onset, just the beginning of that early, early light. And I took the Book of Common Prayer out. And now remember, I'm a new business guy. This whole thing, trying to figure this book out. Anybody that's, y'all know what I'm talking about, trying to figure this book out. And I knew enough that somewhere in the back part of the book, it broke down what you want to read for prayers, what part of the scripture you might go to, what songs you should read, or whatever. You know, year one, year two. And, well, whatever I picked led me to a point when I finally got to this. And I opened this book up, and here I am after this long night, and I read these words. This is what God drew me to. Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. The beginning of Psalm 130, which we all prayed just a few minutes ago. And Psalm 130 goes on. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for Him. In His word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. What a powerful gift to have been given at that moment. And oddly enough, in my bag, I had some writing paper. Turns out it was a yellow pad, but that's another story for another time. And I started to write to the vicar of our church. This was a little small church that up until a year ago had not had a full-time priest. And it had been a gas station that they had built out to make it more like a church. It was really kind of cool. And I decided to write him about this incredible evening that had morning that had been happening. And then God said, I'm not finished. And it was at that moment, sitting there alone, having read Psalm 130, more than watchmen for the morning, been so connected to the scripture that the sun, the orb, the glow started to rise up on the horizon. Because there was only open sea. And it got brighter and brighter and brighter, this sun rise. Or as I think I may have written, S O N. Rise. And it was a gift that has gone deeply into my heart. May the blessing of God Almighty find you when you least expect it and need it most. Holding on to an image like that can spur a memory that reminds us of God's continual presence and love. Even when we hear awful news such as we have heard in the last 10 days when we're trying to cope with what it means to find out people being 
murdered in a church. And yet, the blessing of God that finds us is the heart of forgiveness that comes from the relatives. The spontaneous, incredible gift of grace, not only to the one alleged to be the murderer, but a gift of grace to all of us who are wondering, where is God? Finding the blessing of God when we least expect it and need it most. I think is one of the things God does best because we don't pay attention all that good. If we pay attention more often, maybe we would also be fully part of that blessing. All these words I offer in the name of God, Father, Son, and